Hello there gang and welcome to Displaying Model Behaviour. There's a whole bunch of news out there, so let's talk about it. First up, doing the rounds on the internet is this Wolverine leaked MCU Marvel Legend picture. Well, not just one, a whole bunch of them. And it's kind of leaked, but also not really. This was a figure that was on display at some Marvel events somewhere in the world. Don't know where it was, but they were clearly dropping little hints and Easter eggs as to what is coming out. Because I don't often like sharing leaked images, but this is everywhere and kind of officially sneaked. Not leaked, but sneaked. So we've got this Wolverine here, and he looks exactly like you would expect him to. The Marvel Legends MCU figures, the likenesses are usually pretty great, and they've nailed it with Hugh Jackman with the maskless face. I think the face with the mask, I don't know. I, I think it looks kind of derpy. I, I don't think it looks good at all. I think with that mask, you really need a an, an, an interesting kind of expression to make it pop and make it work. And just having a plain Jane, nothing going on, stoic, closed mouth... Nah, looks looks derptastic, man. Looks looks derperific. But the actual Hugh Jackman face, that's the bee's knees. And of course, this is the clean, pristine costume with sleeves. Obviously, not the one that I think we really want. I think the one that we really want is going to be coming a little bit later. Kind of like the Spider-Man No Way Home figures. We got the bare bones, basic Spider-Man. Then we got the ones with the face portraits and all that kind of good stuff. Wouldn't surprise me if we see another Wolverine down the line with the bare arms exposed, maybe some bullet wounds and some other battle damage, and hopefully a couple of kind of faces. Because, come on, you, you need to have that let's and go kind of look. But that notwithstanding, the sculpting on the suit looks gorgeous. All the texture on there as well, the details on the gloves, the claws, they look real nice. The suit looks a bit plain with its plastic because it looks like the you know the yellow is just yellow plastic there's no paint or anything on there so kind of standard and it would be it would be nice if there was more paint detail going on there maybe they're saving that for the battle damaged look but just for an initial offering i got to say he looks okay also in the back of this random marvel display that was photographed somewhere in the world we've got the aforementioned wolverine toy along with the deadpool as well which of course is no surprise to anyone. That's why I, I wasn't exactly burying the lead by not talking about this guy. Of course we were going to get a Deadpool figure. And he was going to look pretty darn accurate. And that seems to be the case. The more I do see Deadpool from this movie, the more I kind of like some of the gold accents and buckles and stuff on him. Makes him look a little bit different. So I'm sure we're going to see these properly fully revealed at Comic-Con. But in the meantime, this is a nice little sneaky peek. We searched you pretty darn good, didn't they? When you... McFarlane Toys have their Jonah Hex Deluxe Horse 2-pack up for pre-order now on their website. We previewed it on the last episode. Now we got the full reveal pictures and he still looks really pretty for a reasonable price as well. I'm just getting all my details on my Japanese setup here. So it's 11,000 yen, which is actually only about 60 bucks. So once again, McFarlane coming in clutch with some good prices here. When you look at how much Marvel Legends are charging for things like their Phoenix, and then you see what McFarlane are giving you for a man with a horse and a cloth goods jacket and a whole bunch of stuff, you're like, mm, I know that plastic is getting more expensive and blah, 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 but at the same time, Hasbro, come on, I think I think you can do better by us, if, if we're being honest. Because even though I'm not a McFarlane person, I'm not a DC person, I'm sure as heck not a Jonah Hex person, I don't know anything about the character. But I know a good looking product when I see one. And I gotta admit, this guy, he looks like a good product to me. Gang, if you're enjoying this show, I hope you are, then maybe check out our channel sponsor, Legendsverse. This is an amazing website that you can use to collaboratize, that's not a word, to coordinate, corroborate, cajoliate, I don't know, to keep track of all your figures. It's probably a better way of saying it. It doesn't matter if you collect Legends, G.I. Joe, Marvel Select, or even <laughs> McFarlane. I mean, it's cute that they have a section there. So if you, like me, 
find yourself drowning in plastic action figures, then you want to keep track of what you got and also what you need, then you need to go over to Leg Legendsverse? Le yeah, that's the, the name. I sort of pronounced it Legendsverse. Luckily, the link is in the description below, so you don't have to do it off of what I say, because <laughs> you'd be in big trouble if that was the case. I know you're thinking, Dave, why don't you just film one good advert and then just insert that in every episode? Because that feels lazy. So instead, you're going to hear me bungle my way through a new commercial every single episode. Because you know what? I think that's a little bit more fun. Go check out Legends first, though. They're doing awesome work. McFarlane are really getting into it with their statues now. We got all the Marvel reveals and the hitting DC too. First of all, the one that really caught my eye was this one six scale Wonder Woman. It looks beautiful. Like if you had this kind of paintwork and sculpting in an articulated one twelfth scale figure, oh wow, just mwah. Gorgeous. But for a basic statue, she looks really, really pretty. I gotta say, this is just a fantastic looking Wonder Woman. I wouldn't have anywhere to put it or anything to really do with it, despite, you know, just having it there on its own. But man, as a first offering from this line of DC statues, I think it's the first one. She looks great. McFarlane are also doing a Jon Stewart Green Lantern statue to go with your Wonder Woman, which gives me the sneaking suspicion we might be getting an entire Justice League out of this. And honestly, if that's going to be the case, then judging by these first two, that's going to be one a heck of an impressive looking display right there. And these resin statues, they're more expensive than action figures, obviously, but they're not crazy either. So I can imagine a, a whole Justice League setup of these guys. That's going to look real good gonna look real good. You Justice League fans, you you might want to start getting in on this with the ground floor because I can imagine that when more of these come out, the original ones might get a bit more expensive. So, you know, when you get the whole set for the original price, you can thank your old pal Dave. We got a few McFarlane statues actually. They're doing this Spawn figure as well, which is going to be one eighth scale. So smaller than Hot Toys, bigger than Legends, that little middle point. Is it a sweet spot? I don't know, maybe for statues, it might be. And this Spawn, again, I think, I imagine when Todd drew the character initially in the 90s, he was like, what is going to look cool in a static pose? And Spawn always does, with the big cape billowing, looks really pretty. I don't have a price for it, but it should be up for order now, as I say this, the 22nd of July. So I'll have a little rummage around, see if I can find a price or a listing for him. Tamashi Nations are previewing another upcoming figure from their My Hero Academia line. This time it is Katsuki Bakugo. There you go, that's a bit of sight reading for you. I definitely butchered that last name. But it's another addition to their My Hero Academia line, and that's just like the others. It looks like a three-dimensional version of a 2D character that's been beautifully realized. Come to expect that from these guys. This is more of the same, and it does look pretty. Speaking of more of the same, but looking pretty, Flame Toys are doing a new version of their Megazord, and... <sighs> the, the original one is, is still my preferred one. I mean, that just looked incredible. But if you wanted a variant, they're doing this black variant now. I mean, black is one of the prime colors. It's just a darker version. Looks kind of like a Nemesis Prime version of the Megazord. But just, geez Louise. I mean, flame toys are really expensive. You're talking like over 500 bucks. But, I mean, come on. You, it's just gorgeous. But then again, if I was going to spend that kind of money, I'd want the OG Power Rangers colors. The Megazord has never looked more badass. So if you have a huge chunk of change that's burning a hole in your wallet, well, there are a lot worse things you could spend it on than this guy. After years of experiments, Andre Toulon has created puppets that want to play with you. NECA are going for some deep cut horror now with their Puppet Master line. We're getting a two-pack to kick things off with Leech Woman and Toulon's Puppet. I, I haven't seen the Puppet Master horror movies. I, I like my horror, but actually I've got to admit, the, the, the creepy Puppet Master toys, I was always like, oh no, that's a, a little bit too creepy. Definitely wouldn't want toys 
of the killer toys. That's... no, no, I, I enjoy sleeping comfortably at night. If, however, this, this, you know, floats your boat, then these are going to be available around about November of this year. I'd hazard a guess, NECA 2-pack, probably going to cost you about 70 bucks, give or take, maybe even a little bit more than that, it's hard to say, but it's a very prestige looking 2-pack. I, I love the actual box itself. Very nice graphic design on there, so if you hardcore horror fans, this one might be a winner. No, no, don't you see? It uh, swims, flies, and knows Taekwondo. It's a triple threat. NECA have also shown off their TMNT Baxter Stockman figure. Once again, straight out of the Mirage comics. This guy's going to be available around about August of this year, so not too long to wait. And yeah, coming with the mouser and the hands and the computer, the different faces. It's another complete package type figure from NECA. They... They are expensive. I was going to say, they, they don't give you, like, massive bang for your buck, but just you, you pay a good price and get a good action figure with a lot of accessories. So, you know, I can't be mad about that. Gridiron Studios. These guys love making toys for your toys, especially when it comes to your G.I. Joe military types. So we've got this awesome missile set up here. This is available for, I think, $60. These accessories are always pretty expensive, but they are kind of bespoke as well. They've got nice looking stuff going on here. I'm not a military weapons type guy, but this looks very real world. I, I think there's probably been a lot of research and accuracy and slavish detail to recreate real military equipment by the looks of things. So this is the uh, MPAC 47 SAM drone featuring multiple points of articulation, all that good stuff. So yeah, available for pre-order on Gridiron Studios now. Go check what they've got because if, if, if you're a G.I. Joe man, and you want to bulk out your collection, and let's face it, it's not like there's any big expensive G.I. Joe things on the horizon. <laughs> you might want to throw some money at these, because they are some wicked looking accessories. Higher Toys are showing off their Heat Ray Godzilla. This is from the 1991 film Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. And I think me personally, aesthetically, this is one of my favourite, like, eras of Godzilla design. He hadn't gone full lizard cat, but he just had this sleek kind of look to him that just looked pretty badass. And Higher Toys, they seem to be covering every single version of Godzilla. You can imagine, they're working their way through. So this guy's going to be retailing for about 50 bucks, give or take. I mean, it always varies when you shop around and will hopefully be available around about the first quarter of next year. So keep your eyes out for him. Oh, I thought we were boys! 3-0 have shown off a sneak peek of their Mirage figure from Transformers Rise of the Beasts. And we literally just have this one picture to go on, so I'm not even going to add any more commentary, a commentary on this one. Can't even say it. Yeah, another nice looking Transformer from 3-0. I'm sure we're going to get a lot more pictures later. And that's when I'll talk a bit more about him. <laughs> This is a cool little prop now. We've got the SH Figure Arts Medical Machine from Dragon Ball Z. So a 1 12th scale little medical booth thing. I, I, I don't know Dragon Ball Z. I'm sure it features prominently in, a, in an episode or two. And maybe if you're just building out a science lab type diorama, this will fit in nicely. It's got a bit of a cartoony sort of aesthetic with some of the brighter buttons and colours and all that kind of thing. But you could still make this work for most 1 12th scale lines if this is something you're after. It might just be a bit more specifically bespoke for Dragon Ball Z. But hey, uh, I look at things with a creative eye. Sometimes you can throw props anywhere. Nonetheless though, this is going to be available, well, pre-orders are open for this now. And it should be released around about March of next year. All right, I just want to read this off my phone to make sure I get the details right. Coldog X Dam Toys, Death Gas Station, <laughs> Sean Connery, Death Gas Station Series, Canyon Sisters Deluxe Two Pack available for pre-order on 5K Toys right now, 160 bucks for two of these high art style soft goods, including figures. I'm a big mark for the the Coldog Dam Toys collaborations. I've got a couple of them. 
They're gorgeous. They're some of my favorite action figures because, as I said, it's kind of high art. It's it, it's like a little bit more. Oh, this feels like someone has like an old man with with withered hands has handcrafted these with a, a, a little sculpting tool. It's probably not the case, but they have that feel. These look gorgeous. I haven't got the other gas station characters, but on my big mental list of action figures that are always on my back order, oh, maybe I might want to buy these if I'm feeling froggy one day, they're always pretty high up there. And these two sisters, they're about to join that list because these look pretty cool too. Over in Custom Corner, Symbiote Seeker absolutely killing it once again. I've featured him a couple of times, but he's a good brother. He's a friend of the show, and he... Even if I didn't like him, to be honest, I'd probably still feature his work because dang. And in this case, this is a dang. I've seen a few attempts at different Marvel vs. Capcom type Wolverines, but this, 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 this is everything here. This is, this is everything that is so unique about that design. Boom. Put in a custom action figure. It just makes me wish, wish we could get a regular normal release of this. Because I love the aesthetics. I love the chonk. But I love the ridiculous huge mask. Like that's just, that's the Capcom design. And it's, it's, it's over the top and it's highly stylized. And I love it. Oh, I'm normally the first person to say no more sublines. No more animated versions or gamer versions. I just want my 616. But in this case... I'd make a whopper of an exception. And if it looked as good as this, dude, I'd buy two. So Symbiote Seeker, once again, man, double thumbs up. Bravo for killing the game. Keep raising that custom bar, because dang it, <laughs> I love everything I'm seeing. This one, this one's pretty special. Today's cosplay cover artist is Clau Balladanita. I hope I pronounced that correctly. This is not the first take I've done of this segment. But yeah, she's awesome. She's doing Street Fighter cosplay. That's the first thing that caught my eye. I'm always going to have a soft spot for that. But there's a whole ton of stuff up on her Instagram page. Go give her a follow. And folks, that does it for good news for today. What did you think about the items covered? Comment below. Let me know. And if you like what you see here and you want to see more, then you know what you got to do. You got to join the 6-1 clicks by clicking the like, share, and subscribe buttons. And if you want to go one step beyond with supporting the channel, you can do by joining the Model Behavior Underground, aka the YouTube channel membership section. Easy for me to say. So if you do that, then I do all of these extra live streams that you can be a part of. And also you can see some exclusive videos that I put out where I'm like, ah, I don't know if this is suitable for the main channel. I'm going to put it in the members section where the people there, hopefully by proxy, have already forgiven me. And, <laughs> and also you get some previews of stuff that's coming up in the future that is just taking me a long time to make. Like the Age of Apocalypse deep dive that I'm currently putting out. Episode 2 is going up today. And don't worry, if you're not part of the channel member section, you ain't going to miss out. Because as soon as it is finally finished, I'll put the whole thing on the main page. All the stuff on the members section for the Model Behavior Underground... That's just like extra bonus stuff, just to say thank you for helping out the channel. So gang, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, keep displaying model behavior.